That's it, Molly Ann. Obviously. Um, as promised, I'm going to answer some of your questions that you all posted for me. Y'all only gave me 91 to choose from. I'm just kidding. That's a lot of questions. Um, so I'm just going to start at the top and go down the list until this gets too long and boring or my throat gets dry or something. Um, first question is from Katie Ritz. Who is your celebrity crush? Um, my first celebrity crush ever was Cookie Monster. Because he always had cookies somehow. And he would just eat them and love them so much. And with passion and not caring what anybody thought about him. You know, and I think being able to eat a lot of cookies without shame should be more prevalent in our society. So, he really impacted my life at a young age. My second celebrity crush is Johnny Depp. For obvious reasons um he is an amazing actor and he's a little crazy which I can identify with and y'all he's beautiful like I just don't get tired of looking at that man like ever but the next question is from Chris Patton McQueen, how have the recent blessings of fan support and something opportunities affected your home life? Mm -hmm. How are your sweet kids dealing with the recent changes at homeschool, etc., that sort of thing? Thanks, love. Um, the fan support has been incredible. It really blows your mind to have a lot of people all of a sudden be very interested in you and very supportive of you and um it's it's really kind of crazy in a great way and it makes my day to read stories um from people that tell me they're laughing um you know or I've gotten a lot of messages from people that say we're in the hospital, we have a sick family member, and we love your videos, keep them coming. Um, that inspires me to do the best I can to keep giving to the people that it means a lot to. Um, it is a bigger blessing to give than to receive. And if what I'm doing is giving to people, then <laughs> that's crazy. I'll keep doing it. it it's amazing. It's really overwhelming and phenomenal. Um, my kids are excited about all of it and they think it's really great. And, but they still don't listen to me like they should. I don't think they understand that um, y'all love me so much. And that they should be more obedient now. And that they should not bicker as much. And that they should never have dirty laundry for me to wash. I need to make a video for my kids, I think. Um, the next question is from Dakota Lewis. How is it like being so freaking gorgeous with this little smiley face thing at the end? Um, thank you, Dakota. I don't know how to answer that. I, I don't see myself the way that other people see me. I just... I'm just me, and uh, thank you. I don't know how to answer that. Uh, the next question, Stacy Amber Gallimore asked, I saw you post the other day about a diet and showing how you lost weight. So how did you do it? What did you eat, work out, etc.? Um, I always say about diets that it's like a... Uh, an infomercial where they've got those vi the DVDs, the videos, 30 days, it'll change your life. It's going to be amazing. But, you know, when you order the videos and you're so excited, you're like, oh, I can't wait to get those videos. And then you get them and you still have to do the work. Like, just ordering the videos doesn't change your life. You have to change your life. 
Um, I started running two years ago to cope with stress and because I just finally decided I wanted to feel good again. And I'll never forget the first time I ran in like, it had been 15 years since I'd been really active. And I went out running and I, I was like, who attached medicine balls to the back of my thighs, like banging into my legs? And it was my butt. And that was a little disturbing to me, but it was okay. And I went back and I kept doing it. And I kept going. And every time I got stronger and there was less and less medicine ball following me in the back. Um, you just have to start. You just have to do it. As far as eating, the best tips I can give you from my own experience is to drink a lot of water. To not drink any sugary drinks. Um, what works best for me is to cut out breads and sugars and to eat a lot of salad, vegetables, chicken, fish. Um, I don't really watch how much I eat when I eat that way. It just works for me and I lose weight really well that way and I feel amazing. You get so much energy from that. Um, next question. Chelsea Megan wants to know who is your inspiration? The person you look up to most. The person who inspired you to remain so positive all the time. Well, first I would have to say my parents. Who have both lived lives with um, some traumatic events early in their childhood. And they, you know, always kept going. It wasn't easy to do. Um... And especially my father, who survived a horrible childhood and growing up. And is one of the strongest people that I know. Who I've never ever heard him say a bad word about any human. And he of all the people that I know would have the right to be angry and hurt and bitter. And he's just not he's kind and compassionate and supportive and the last two years he and my mother have saved my life and my kids sorry I don't know what I would do without them so definitely mom and dad thank you both if you're watching this um and the other kind of people that I would say inspired me the most were that well my children were very small and I was home with them all the time we didn't have TV I didn't have a car we were just kind of there and we just you know lived and dwelled every day I read um, three biographies from three people who were all Christians who had been wrongfully imprisoned during various wars um, one of them was Corey Ten Boom and I read the book In My Father's House the other ones were Richard and Sabina Wormbrand, who were husband and wife. She wrote a book called The Pastor's Wife, and he wrote a book called Tortured for Christ. And the things, the messages that were so beautiful in those books were their undying hope and their resolved peace in their circumstances. I was not... Um, I was in a very difficult place for a very long time because of things, traumas that I had suffered as a child and a young girl. And I've, I also spent a lot of time feeling very isolated and being actually isolated and dehumanized at, on different levels. And um, these were people that had gone through that and had come out of it because I always told myself it doesn't matter if. I'm in a mansion with everything in the world or if I'm in solitary confinement in a prison cell I want to be content and I want to be at peace and so I knew my daily battle for a very long time was being content no matter what my circumstances were and the reason these people inspired me so much was because they fought that same fight and they came out on the other side very victorious and strong um, but the thing I love that Corey Ten Boom said in the book My Father's House was, and this is a, a line that will 
stick with me forever and that I hang on to when I don't understand what's going on in my life. She said, every thing that comes into your life, no matter how big or how small it seems, every skill you learn, every person you encounter, are all working and building toward God's ultimate purpose for you. And no minute is wasted. No skill is wasted. No pain is wasted. No tear is wasted. And I can see that more and more clearly every day. So that's it for the questions today. I told y'all I was hormonal. I did not want to cry through this video. Um, if y'all enjoyed this, I'll be happy to do another one. It's really about what y'all want. Because I enjoy so much connecting with you guys and interacting with you. Um, and you just really have brought so much into my life. And just thank you so much. I'll keep keeping it real. Peace, y'all.